Welcome, church. You've made it to the last Sunday of 2020. During Advent, we have been working towards the coming of our Savior, and now we want to celebrate the fact that our Savior is going to come again, this King who's going to come as a roaring lion of Judah. We invite you to stand and sing and celebrate our coming King. Come on, church, let's lift our voices. Let's sing this out with me. It's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? up the gates so open up the gates make way before the king of kings the god who comes to save is here to set the captives free for who can stop the lord almighty our god is the lion Judah, he's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sing it. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before. 
goodness of God. Let's sing this out, church, all my life. Good morning, church. My name is Tommy Branna, and I'm one of the associate pastors here at MVPC, and we're just so thrilled to have you with us this morning. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas. We know that everyone was celebrating a little bit differently this year and years past, but hope that was just a great time for you and your family. If you are new or just kind of checking out MVPC, we would love the opportunity to tell you a little bit more about who we are. So if you would just click the connect button over on the side of your screen, if you just give us a little bit of information about yourselves, uh, we can tell you more about who we are. We'd love for you to do that. And also just want to remind our families that we do have our children's lessons available online. So if you click that button over in the chat or visit our website, um, we have engaging, amazing content for your kids to learn a little bit more about who God is. So hope you can take advantage of that. 
You know, we here at MVPC are for La Miranda. We want to be for the flourishing of our community. We want it to be the best that it can be, and our hope is that this community would really come to know the love of God in the way that we have. And so we just want to thank you for coming to be a part of uh, what we're doing here at this church this morning, for worshiping with us, and for joining in us in our mission to be for La Miranda couple things I want to let you know about. Um, next Sunday, we will have the patio open again on Sunday morning. would love for you to join us, and we are going to be doing a deep dive um, into this, the incredible beauty of Scripture and how it can shape us and help us meet with God. And then on January 10th, we are kicking off a new series called Growing Forward, where we're going to be in the book of Nehemiah, and we're really going to look at how it is that God can work in broken communities to bring healing and restoration, and to give them purpose. And we just would love for you and your friends and your family uh, to join us for that series starting on January 10th. So please uh, make sure that you don't miss that. Last reminder, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the new month, which means we're going to be celebrating communion together as a church. So if you come and join us on the patio, we will have COVID-safe elements uh, for you. But if you're going to be watching online, we just invite you to have some things prepared at home, whether it's bread, crackers, juice, uh, whatever you would need to be able to celebrate communion with us. Well, church, as we come into our time of, com or, <laughs> of offering today, uh, a couple things I just want to be able to say thank you for. First, thank you for your generous support of our Christmas Eve offering. You know, every year we set aside our Christmas Eve offering to support some of our mission partners. And this year we are supporting the Bay Area Rescue Mission and Kids Alive DR. And we just are grateful for your support um, and helping us be able to bless them this year uh, through that offering. Also just want to thank you really as we come to the end of this year for your continued support of our church body. This has been a challenging year. Uh, there's been so much change, so many things we've kind of had to adapt to, uh, so many ways we've had to figure out as a church uh, what it looks like to fulfill God's call, and we just are grateful for your faithfulness. Thank you for your prayers, for your service, uh, and thank you for your donations, your financial support that helps us continue to be the church that God has called us to be and to love this community. You know, as we are in the last Sunday of the year, we know that this is a time where a lot of families are making decisions about their year-end giving and how they sort of want to um, disperse those funds. And we just would want to invite you to consider sharing that with us here at MVPC to continue to support us in the mission that we believe God has called us to, which is sharing his love with this community and around the world. So if that's something that you would want to do, there are several different ways that you can do that. There's going to be a number up on the screen where you can actually text to give. Uh, you can visit our website, and there's a give button. There's also a give button where you're watching online right now. Or if you'd feel more comfortable bringing a check, you can come drop that off at our church offices. Um, but again, we just want to thank you for your support and invite you to continue supporting us so that we can continue to do the work that God has called us to do. You know, I'm going to pray for us here in just a second, and then following that, there's going to be uh, just a time where Greg is going to play some music for us. And during that, would want to invite you to use that time either kind of to do your giving or maybe to just spend some time talking to God and meeting with him. Uh, but would you join me in a word of prayer? Jesus, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for your generosity. God, thank you for your faithfulness that in the midst of a challenging year, Lord, an incredibly challenging year, you have been with us every step of the way, and you have been at work, Lord, to care for those in need of care. God, we just ask that you would help us to be people who look more and more like you, who reflect your generosity into this world, that we would use our time, our talents, and our treasures for your purposes and your kingdom. And Lord, we ask that um, you would take what we can offer and that you would multiply it uh, in ways we can't even imagine to bring your kingdom. Jesus, we love you so much, and we are so grateful for who you are. Amen. Well, church, we have a special opportunity to hear from a special guest this morning that will be bringing God's word 
Reverend Kenton Jang is here with us this morning to bring God's word to us, and we're so glad to have him. Uh, Kenton and our pastor Dave Miles have known each other for years, actually. So Kenton is a Bay Area native, grew up here in the Bay Area, went to Cal, and then went on to Dallas Theological Seminary, where he and Dave Miles knew each other and would quite often go for runs together after going to class together. Uh, and Kenton is here with us to share God's word, and we are so glad to have you. Kenton, welcome to MVPC, and we invite you to bring God's word to us today. Thank you so much, Pastor Dave. I trust you and all those you love had a wonderful, meaningful Christmas. Uh, even though it had those fingerprints of 2020 on it. But it reminded me of the Grinch and how the Grinch stole Christmas, where eventually the Grinch realized that the residents of Whoville could celebrate Christmas even without all the stuff. And for us as followers of Jesus, the reality and truth of what we celebrate on Christmas uh, Emmanuel, God with us, will never change. And that reality was with us and is with us uh, today. I want to express my thanks to you and to Pastor Dave for this special gift of being able to worship with you as we put a bow uh, on 2020. I met Pastor Dave uh, years and years ago, as uh, Pastor, we've got two Pastor Daves here, uh, mentioned. And that guy is a freak of nature. Uh, one day after class, uh, uh, Pastor Dave says, hey, Kenton, let's go run the lake. And, well, as you know, everything in Texas is bigger. Everything's bigger in Texas. And the lake in, 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 in Dallas is called White Rock Lake. And it's about three times as big as Lake Merritt. And if you know Pastor Dave, I said he's a freak of nature. My race pace is probably his training pace plus 30 seconds. So if I'm running a seven and a half minute mile for my race pace, he's training at seven minutes a mile. So here we go, we go off onto this run and we're getting near the end, uh, well past nine miles in. And, and my legs are, I'm, I'm just tired, I'm drained. I've never run this far before in my life. And so I'm running and as I get near the end, I look down and Dave is way off down that way, and there's a snake across the path. And I said, how am I going to get over this? So I jump over the snake, and I land, and my calf starts cramping up, and I just roll over, and I hit the ground. And then finally, Dave looks back at me. He sees me on the ground, and I kind of get myself back up, and I limp my way over to him. He says, hey, did you see the snake? And I'm thinking, yeah, I saw the snake crazy guy. But speaking of putting a bow on 2020, I'm guessing we're all pretty anxious to do that. It's been hard. It's been rough. It's been unsettling. It's been draining. As a church, this church family is going through a challenging process of revitalization. As a community, we've We've had to address and struggle with the issues of racial justice. And as a world, we're fighting through and navigating this whole COVID-19 uh, thing. And this journey is just taking the life out of us in ways that uh, we can't even articulate. I just know something's happening to me. I'm, I'm losing energy. I'm losing something. And I can't put it into words, but it's doing something to us. And we know, but we know we need to persevere. But how? We know we can't give up, but what's left in our tanks? We don't want to lose hope, but how more frustrating can this be? Several years ago, I had the blessing of uh, going with a team of men to Nakuru, Kenya, on a short-term missions trip. Uh, it was actually my second time, and we were uh, day 10 of a 17-day trip. We were 10,000 miles from home. We were drained and depleted in every way, mentally, emotionally, uh, just physically. We were just very tired. We were both willing and ready to check out and go home. 
I mean, if we could. I was feeling kind of like how many of us are feeling right now. Except now, it's even worse because back then in Kenya, we thought, well, we can come home. We have the solace of home to come to. But now, being home doesn't change anything. Because being home is rough. We don't have the solace of home. It's not the same. So this morning, the Lord is leading me not so much to share a sermon per se, but just some thoughts he gave me that morning in Kenya. And, and coupling that with the experiences of 2020 as we've gone through it, I'd like to just share some thoughts on how Jesus is navigating me through this time and why and how we as followers of Jesus need to persevere. Why our calling is to not lose hope, but to persist, to never give up. We're going to explore ways we can refuel prayers that we can be praying as we persevere. Let's pray right now. Father, thank you for your word. And I ask, I've got a big ask. Would you reveal to us the truths you have for us today and get me out of the way from being a distraction to your truth? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the first thing that I want us to think about is persevering refines us of impurities. Persevering, hanging in there, refines us of impurities. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. There are times we go through what we go through because God wants to reveal to us and free us of something in our lives that is not right with him. Something that's weighing us down, something that's weighing me down from living my best for Jesus. The author challenges us here, let us run but the critical component precedes this. He says, let us throw off. I was a cross-country track guy in high school, mainly because with my 120 pounds, I didn't want to destroy anyone in football. So I, I was a runner. Uh, one day I had a chance to run the Beta Breakers, and uh, me and my buddy, this was a little bit later on in life, we were past college then, but we ran the Beta Breakers. And I remember we were about 10 minutes from the starting line, and we start, get to the start line, and then as we're running, we notice there's all this, there's garbage bags on the ground, there's hats on the ground, there's sweatshirts on the ground, because why? People were unloading things that would slow them down from running the race. The context here is that the faith walkers, not as spectators, but as examples for you and me, who ran their best when they eliminated unhealthy baggage. A few years ago, I transitioned from um, a paid staff at my church to a volunteer staff for a couple reasons. One, I was talking to our lead pastor. I said, hey, Pastor Steve, I think we're at a place now where we can move uh, the men's ministry to being completely lay-led. And uh, that would free up financial resources for other important ministries. And so we went off this process, and, and we made this change. And the other thing that gave me an opportunity to do, uh, I was able to begin to work outside the four walls of the church once again, just, just to get out there. And uh, so I did. And so I'd been working at Walmart. I didn't have to do anything fancy or, or majestic or anything. So I said, I'll, I'll just work out at the local Walmart. So I began working at the local Walmart. And I'm working in the e-commerce section. So uh, if you order something online, I'll go get it. I'll shop for you and things like that. Well, during the season, you know, the store's been open. It's pretty intense. Um, and everyone's kind of on edge a little bit just because we're in the public every day. Well, there's one of my coworkers. I, I just don't like her. You know, I, I, I try. It's just one of those things. And just her attitude. And, and one day she says, hey, can I borrow the keys uh, to unlock this cabinet to put some things in. And I said, okay. And, and I, I said, where are you? And she disappeared. And so eventually, uh, she comes back at the end of the day, and she leaves 
uh, this infant formula on my counter. And she says, it's just one case. And she walks away. And I'm thinking, you want me to do your job? And so I, I do it, of course. But then every day this kind of stuff happens. And I'm thinking, man, Lord, what, what, what? But then the Lord says to me, hey, Kenton, you know, I really love her. She means a lot to me. And I says, Lord, I get it. If that's someone you greatly love, how can I think anything else but care for that person too? And so this weight has come off me because I have God, God's been refining me through this time of needing to keep going through this. Persevering refines us of impurities. See, because this unhealthy stuff in our lives is a weight on our soul. It depletes us. It drains our energy. So when we realize the things that God wants to reveal to us about something in my life that's not right, and I let go of it, it frees me up. So here's a prayer. Jesus, what are you seeking to reveal to me about my heart, about my attitude, about my perspective that is sideways from you? And that will give us new energy as weights come off of us. So persevering refines us of impurities. The second thing, persevering refocuses us on Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 says this. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author, perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So there are times we go through what we go through because God wants to reveal an impurity about us to us. But there are also times we go through what we go through because God wants us to remember who Jesus is, who we are to him. The author reminds us Jesus is the architect. He's the developer of our faith. We're his joy. I love this idea of that our faith, this sense of community that we're in this thing together. That everything that takes place in life is not necessarily about me. It's not necessarily about my life, but it's about God's eternal plan to bring about glory to himself. We're part of that amazing tapestry, but it's not always about me. Bob Goff in his book, Everybody Always, Bob's one of my favorite authors. He wrote Love Does. If you never read it, you got to pick it up, read it, Love Does, or uh, everybody always, he's got a new one, Dream Big, but in Everybody Always, he shares a story about uh, two people praying. One is a bride who's praying for sunshine for her wedding day, and the other is a farmer who's praying for rain because that's what he needs for his crops. See, it, it's not that God doesn't care about us, but sometimes God is simply doing something important in someone else's life. It's not about me, but about Jesus and his glory. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3 says this. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. You will not grow weary and lose heart. See, when we focus on Jesus, what he said, what he did, how he endured the cross, he went through the trial, the garden, everything for us, and who we are to him. In fact, Isaiah says what? Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. When we focus on Jesus, who he is to us and who we are to him, and we realize that it's not always about us, but it's about him, there's new strength for us. So a prayer for us to persevere is this. Is there something about you, Lord, is there something about that you have said that you desire for me to remember about you, to learn about you, to experience with you? So our prayer is, Lord, is there something about me that you want to reveal to me needs to be changed? 
There's another prayer. Lord, what is it about you that you want to remind you about as we go through these difficult times? A third one, persevering renovates us to Christ-likeness. Persevering remakes us to be like Jesus. James chapter 1 says this, chapter 1, verses 2, 3, and 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. There are times we go through what we go through because God is working to remake us to be like Jesus. James reminds us that during times in life like 2020, our faith is being shaped and who we are is being developed. You know, I'm not a contractor, but I love breaking stuff up. And one day we decided to remodel. We have, fortunately, we have three bathrooms in our home. And we decided to remodel two at the same time and because they were back to back to each other. So we said, we're just going to demolish both and do both. But what that did, it left us with one restroom up on, uh, we have a room above our garage, which is like a second floor room, but that was the last bath bathroom left, and there were five of us in the house at the time. And man, that was hard. <laughs> Remodeling was hard. That was the hard part, the hardest part of the process. You know, John the Baptist has an interesting prayer that probably many followers of Jesus have prayed at one time or another, and he said this, he must become greater, I must become less. He must become greater, and I must become less. You know what? That's not a comfortable process. I mean, John the Baptist was eating, living in the wilderness, eating insects. Randy Pausch, in his uh, well-known lecture entitled The Last Lecture, says this, Experiences, experience is what you get when you didn't get what you wanted. And experience is often the most valuable thing you have to offer. Experience is what you get when you didn't get what you wanted. And experience is often the most valuable thing you have to offer. So how does this play out in our lives? I love the verse, 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, 19, and 20, where it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. And if we think about being obedient to Jesus as he's renovating us, as he's making us more like himself, it's about being obedient to him, right? And he says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. I remember, you guys are going to be studying Nehemiah, I think, right? Next and there's a, there's a portion in there where um, Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So we need to be people who are rejoicing always, praying without ceasing, and everything give thanks. And I, I like to uh, challenge maybe our church family here. Uh, maybe in January, uh, in your journal, or get a jar. Our, our, our church at Cornerstone, we've got these jars that they're encouraging the church family to use to have a joy jar and, and every day you write something that you're thankful for or you're joyous about, and you write it down, you put it in the jar so that we can begin to refocus on Jesus and his work in our lives. So the prayer is this, Lord, what am I missing? What am I not being joyful about? What am I not being thankful for? Who, who do I need to be praying for? Because others need me behind them. It's not thinking about myself. In fact, Jesus said what? It's more blessed to give than to receive. So we want to be praying for others. So as we, persevering is about God refining us of impurities. It's about us refocusing on Jesus. It's about God renovating us and remaking us more to be like Jesus. And there's another one. Persevering reaffirms love. Our love for God and God's love for us. 1 Corinthians 13, 
Verse 7 says, Love always pr protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. There are times we go through what we go through because God's providing a stage for us, a stage to reveal our love for Him in faithful obedience acceptance and trust that we, we just, God, I just love you. You know, there are times that I don't sleep through the night. You know, I, I don't know, I just don't. And I remember one, one night I, I went to bed and I woke up about, it was 3.11 because I looked at the clock, it was 3.11. And I said, oh, okay, Lord, what do you want now? And I still remember unmistakably the words Jesus spoke to me. He said, I want to spend time with you. You're doing stuff for me, but don't you want to hang out? That's okay. And so now when I wake up in the middle of the night, I say, hey, Jesus, how you doing? And we talk. And we hang out together. Paul reminds us authentic love perseveres, hangs in there. It trusts God's ways which are above my ways because persevering is the expression of my love for Jesus and acceptance, a contentment in my soul that I'm willing to go through whatever he asks of me. Just hanging in there is an expression of our love for God it says, God, Jesus, I'm all in. No matter what it is, I'm all in. Persevering not only is a chance for us to show, express our love for God, but it reaffirms God's love for us. James chapter 5, verse 11 says this. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. There are times we go through what we go through because God desires us to deeply grasp his rich, loyal love for you and me. James reminds us what Job experienced at the other end of that 2020 season of his life, because Job had a 2020, didn't he? That the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, and that's what he learned. It was May 2004, and I was, at the time I was bivocational, I was working for the city of San Leandro and working um, uh, on staff at Corner, paid staff at Cornerstone Fellowship. But I was at the office at the city of San Leandro, and as I sat there that morning, it was about 10 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, this intense ringing sound began in my left ear. And then it began to feel clogged, and I then began to feel this vertigo and dizziness uh, that morning. And I told my boss, I, I, I explained to her what was happening to me, and I said, I've got, maybe got to get home or something. And I probably shouldn't have driven home that day, but I did. And eventually I got home, and um, everything, my world was turning sideways physically, and I was miserable. Well, eventually I got to the, doc got to, got to the doctor, and uh, after a series of tests and things like that, um, they said, well, one, you have sudden sensorial hearing loss. It's, it's something that happens to, I don't know what percent of the population, but uh, that happened. And eventually they diagnosed it as Meniere's disease. So I since you have some hearing loss in my left ear. But, um, so if you say something to me and I don't answer, it's not that I'm ignoring you or anything like that. It's just uh, uh, maybe I didn't hear what you said. Or I didn't understand what you said. And so that's, uh, that's become a game for my wife and I. I always put her on my side I can't hear, <laughs> and, and uh, not because of that, but it's just when we're, when we're with a crowd, we do that so that uh, she protects me from that side and I can hear from this side. But, but anyway, 
I remember uh, I was so miserable um, that for those few days before things kind of settled down that I remember saying, Lord, I, not that I was suicidal or anything, but I remember saying, Lord, I, I understand why someone might not want to live um, because it was so painful, uh, so hard. And it was during that time in my life that um, Paul's words, I mean, Paul, Paul dealt with something similar. Uh, he called it his thorn in the flesh. And he asked the Lord three times uh, to, to take it away. And the Lord said, nah, you're good with it. <laughs> you're good with it, Paul. Uh, chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 and 10 says, Paul says, but Jesus said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. There are times we need to be very careful what we pray for. For the very hardship or difficulty that you and I may be facing or going through, even 2020 at this very moment, with everything that's been part of it, it may be the very stage God has placed us on for his significant purposes in our life and to reveal his grace to us in ways that we never would have experienced before. I would encourage us to again read the stories of the saints in Hebrews 11. Um, Great, amazing people who went through hard times but learned incredible lessons and were changed and experienced God's incredible grace. So I'd like to share with you some prayers for persevering. As we persevere, persevering refines us of impurities. We need to be asking, what are you revealing to me about me that's not healthy? What are you revealing to me about me that's not healthy, Lord? I want to be refocusing on Jesus so we can pray. What are you reminding me about you that's life-giving and awesome? Persevering is a renovating process for you and me, making us like Jesus. We can be asking, Lord, what about me are you remaking? For what do I need to be joyful? For what do I need to be, for who do I need to be praying? For what do I need to be giving thanks? And then reaffirming. Reaffirming our love. What do you want to do together today, Lord? What do you want to do together? It's been quite a year. but my prayer for us as believers, as followers of Jesus, that, yeah, we want to pray for um, this thing to go away, all this bad stuff to go away. But let us be sure we're praying that, Lord, we learn everything about ourselves and about you and experience you in ways that you want us to experience you before all this goes away before all the ugly goes away. We want your purposes done in our lives through what is part of your eternal plan that included 2020. Well, back to Kenya. About five days later after that, um, that uh, burnout, if you want to call it that, that we were having as a team, um, we ended up on another project, and that was to, uh, we had some money in our project fund to, to bring a goat to a family, uh, a goat, and build a goat pen for that goat uh, in, in Kenya. And, um, and so that's what we did. We were able to, to bring a goat to a family. It's, it's the old proverbial, teach a man to fish you. Oh, no, what was it? Oh, give, him a, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, teach him to fish. Uh, he, he can eat, eat for a lifetime. It's that kind of thing. The goat would serve that purpose because the goat would provide milk. They could probably breed the goat and have other goats, and it would just 
be a tremendous boost for this family. Boy, I tell you, we went through this process, built the goat pen, got the goat to the family. And uh, I remember, I wrote this, different, this is from my journal. The wife said this was a miracle. It was another very humbling experience, very humbling. We gave thanks to God, and it was all done in the name of Jesus. She never thought she would ever have any visitors. We were invited into their mud house for tea and bread. I was praying we would not get sick from the water. I'm such a booger. The house had a clay dirt floor, looked like wallpaper and newspaper on the walls, a few framed pictures. The room was lined with wooden furniture, couches, and chairs we sat on. I imagine even opening the toasty bread. Toasty is the brand of bread they had. There was essentially a loaf of white bread. Toasty bread to share was of some sacrifice. If we had checked out and changed our flight, if we had given up and said, ah, let's just go to the safari and we don't need to do these other things, and we failed to persevere, this miracle from this miracle from the love of God for a family would not have become reality. Not that we're anything great. My prayer for us as followers of Jesus that we would hang in there and not lose hope. We would persevere, persist. Let God's work work in us, refine us, refocus us, renovate us, reaffirm us. And then everyone here would become an answer to someone's prayer. I'm going to ask the worship team to come up as we focus on Jesus through worship, through music, and I'll pray for us as they come up. Heavenly Father, we are amazed at your love for us. We can't get over it. Thank you for enduring all that you endured for us to bring us home to be with you. Thank you that we're your joy. It's been rough. You know it's been tough for us. But our prayer is that um, every thing you want us to learn about ourselves and change about ourselves, everything you want us to learn about you and to see about you, um, because of the hard times we're facing right now, that that would happen. And that your purpose, your glory, your will will be done in our lives. You're our cornerstone. Amen. Respond with the worship together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest spring, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ 
Thank the worship team. Let's pray. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he ever be our hope. May we honor him with our lives. Trust him completely. Lord Jesus, be glorified in the living as we live our lives. We want to be for La Mirinda. Help us to be those ears, that person of encouragement to our neighbors, to this community. We want them to know you, Lord, as you've brought us to know you. In Jesus' amazing, wonderful name, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.